I'm with Jeff Webb and we're halfway through the second day. Now, I'm just wondering, what, what are your emotions at this point? Is it uh, relief, excitement, exhaustion? How do you feel at the moment? Uh, I'm just a picture of process. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I walk around hoping that everything's great. Um, but picking up on comments and all sorts of things. But at the moment, you're just in the, in the moment of trying to maximise the delivery mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, hoping it, it's a success for everybody concerned, really. Well, I think being here since early yesterday morning, I think you should be pleased. I think it's, uh, it's, it's nice to feel... It's taken a couple of years to get back from, from the COVID one, the one we missed. I was trying to work out how many I'd been to and forgot we'd missed one year. So I thought it was coming up to 30, but it's not. It's one fewer than that or two fewer than that. Yeah, we moved here in 2015. Yeah. Um, Which is a surprise in itself. That yeah, one. yeah. And we're now obviously in 2023, so I think, the, I think this is nine or, or eight. Um, but it's been consistent. I think what's happened with, with this move is, is the, the trade that we get, visitors and exhibitors, is, is pretty steady. So it's got, it's got a good track record, obviously. We know about Windsor and the emotion that's attached to Windsor. But this is now a good B2B trade show in the middle of uh, the country and great for international travel. I mean, this particular one, our trend for exhibitors is 16% up on international exhibitors here. And we've had 58 countries come through the door, which is a record. Of 58? 58 countries. Wow. Yeah. yeah, a real global reach now. And I, I think that's testament to the turf sector itself, all the suppliers you see on the show floor, because they're exporting for every major event that you can think of, you know, whether that's Cricket World Cup, whether that's the Olympics, the Com Commonwealth Games. The World Cup Qatar. That, you know, football, cricket, rugby. Where, which, which, is there any countries you can throw into the mix that you think, wow, they've come? Somebody's from that country. Any of the new ones that have made that figure a bit higher? Um, I, just, I just think what's happening is, is that, that the, if you like, TV coverage of sport is exposed what you do well in the UK. So people love our stadiums, they love that atmosphere, but they, they are looking at the pitches, you know, and they're thinking, well, I want one of those. Yeah. And I think, the, the, as I say, it's highly exportable. I think people underestimate the power and the wealth of what we've got here in the UK. And now you've got, if obviously, probably the example I'll give you is Saudi Arabia have just obviously won the World Cup. They've had a delegation here because they know how to win a World Cup and do the bid, but they don't know how to prepare the pitches yet. Same that happened in Qatar before. So I, th I think you're getting that trend now that there is investment globally into major sports and we can only benefit from that. And uh, I think it's a great thing. Great thing for the UK economy, great thing for export. And it comes back to the, the, the value we place on it, and I know you talk about this endlessly, about the fact that we don't place enough value on the people who do those jobs for us. Yeah, I and mean, we've after literally just come from doing a presentation which is picking up on trends in the industry. We, we now have a yearly uh, survey that we do, so one of the worrying trends still is the way people are treated in the workplace. Uh, not in all cases, I mean, there are some good, good positive stories to come out of that as well, but... You know, hours worked seems to be the, the worst one and getting fairly paid for that is another thing. So if you add low pay to long hours of work, the answer that you're going to get is burnout and probably mental health issues, which we know has been prevalent. So what we're trying to look at is why is that trend happening? How can we then get uh, countermeasures to stop that happening in the future? And that's by probably shouting louder and harder and almost naming and shaming bad practice now, because I think that is becoming the issue. Uh, we've got to stamp out bad practice from employers. It's as simple as that, because nobody deserves to be treated unfairly in the workplace. Well, as it stands at the moment, the inquiries that are going on at the moment, that's from 10 Downing Street down, isn't it? <laughs> I, I won't comment on 10 Downing Street, because my father died during the COVID and we couldn't get many people to uh, the funeral, as everybody knew. But uh, it's going to be an exciting time. There's an election next year. It's a good opportunity for a country to reset, in my opinion. But we must be ready for that reset as an industry and take advantage of that and, and promote the wealth of this industry, the knowledge, the expertise that it's got, and, and deliver on that. That camp, where would you say we are in that, in, in the stage of that campaign? Are we still very much at the beginning of it? Or are we about, or, um, a, a third of the way through, halfway through? Where do you think we are? Or, or are we very much at point A? No, I don't think we're a point. As I said, I think there's some really good examples of, of good practice happening now. I think I think the mindset is slowly changing. I mean, 
You need advocacy work. I mean, yesterday here was Meg Lay with her, her team. We all know covered the ashes. And it was a kind of historic breakthrough moment. I think you never had a, an all-female team deliver an Ashes test match before. But what a great advocate for the industry that her and her team have been. But what you need is that not to be a novelty. That's got to become the norm. It shouldn't really be front-page news, but unfortunately it is. So, yeah, a lot more work to do. You're talking about cultural and attitudinal shift, and that will take generations. I mean, the, um, the, for the Ryder Cup this year, it was a, a lady superintendent at uh, Marco Simone in Italy. That was the first of any major, male or female. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. So, you know, you, you're seeing it in football as well. You know, the, the officials in football are now female mani managing those games, which are male games as well. And it doesn't get commented on to the same extent. Sorry? It doesn't get commented on to the same extent as it did maybe even last season. Yeah, because it's, it's more accepted now. So... You know, I, I think what we've got to make sure is that, that we don't lag behind in our attitude because all the other industries are onto the same thing. And we've got to make sure that, that we're modern in our outlook, we're, we've got an open, welcoming environment for anybody to come to. It doesn't matter what, what gender they are or what background they come from, we need to embrace that because we've got a shortage of people. We, we know we've got to do more on getting young people into the industry. But I do think, you know, just recently we've worked with the Trailblazer group, for example, on sports turf apprenticeships. We've got level two, we've got level three, we're now working on level five. So there is real progress. And I think as much as we focus on the negative, we've also got to highlight the positives as well. And getting back to the show, what, what, what has it particularly pleased you about this week so far? Well, I think this, is, this has been a great, great year for us because um, we've consolidated uh, a lot, as I say. We've, we've got growth on the floor plan from last year, so we were up percentage-wise in, in space. What you're seeing is, is, if you like, a transition in some companies. I mean, we've got some very traditional companies that have been with us a long time, but we've also got new companies coming in, as I say. We've got 16% more from a, a global um, perspective as well. So it's not just UK companies focusing on coming here. We've, we've got different different uh, expertise. But I think, as I say, the move since Windsor, the figures bear it out, is consistently around 8,000 plus visitors. Um, and I think people like it. I think sports turf managers enjoy the networking side of it which we've built in with this year the clubhouse which people enjoyed last night's exhibit of drinks and at the grassroots end as well we've brought in the community sports zone this year which has been a bit of a tester for us but worked really really well in terms of giving advice and guidance on grant funding uh, bringing the companies together on the show floor with the funders themselves mm. and our team of pitch advisory service experts who do the pitch reports to get get those pitches to the optimum playing level. So great virtuous circle, really. Well, this show, it's been part of my life since 1995. I've come to everyone it's been on since then, so it's been very much a major part of my life, and I hope it continues for many, many years to come. And thank you very much for your time today, Jeff. I know you're a very busy man, but I appreciate the time you've given us. And uh, good luck for the rest of the show and, and going forward. Great. Thanks very much. Look forward to doing 2024. Smashing. Good man. Thanks. Thank